Do I look to be in a gaming mood? You listen to me and you listen well. You're the reason the law caught wind of our dealings if your men weren't so careless. <sighs> I will not have such carelessness stain my family's name again. Remember who you're working for and don't continue to disappoint me. Excuse me? Was that a threat? No, I didn't think it was. Because you know exactly what I'd do if it was. In the spirit of my notorious overwhelming kindness, I'll overlook what you just said. But believe me, you speak out of line again, my friend, and you won't live to do it again. Have I made myself clear? Good. Now, piss off and find a way to make amends for your carelessness. I'll be in touch with you soon, Cabal. <sighs> well, aren't you going to knock? I can hear you standing out there. You aren't as quiet as you think you are. <laughs> Unfortunately, sweetheart, it's too late. So, why don't you open that door and let me see who lurks behind? Ah, I had a feeling it was you. You're late, you know, but I'll forgive your immediate failure because your lateness is due to your apprehensiveness because you heard me arguing on the phone. I respect your ability to read and react to situations appropriately. That will get you far in my service. So, well done. Maybe that wasn't an immediate failure. I suppose you're wondering who I was on the phone to, considering you were listening in out there. <laughs> well, that was one of my associates. A man named Cabal. Perhaps you've heard of him. <laughs> you needn't look so scared, my dear. Or remain silent. I give you full permission to speak. However, don't get too comfortable around me. I'm your... soon-to-be... employer, shall we say. Not your friend and you will carry that notion in front of your mind whenever you address me. Do I make myself clear? Good. Ah, so you have heard about my moronic friend Cabal. <laughs> That's right. He is that legendary outlaw, Cabal the Cannibal. Well, that's what they called him, didn't they? Cabal the Cannibal? I believe it was because of his love of biting people during a fight. <laughs> oh, he's so pathetic. But he does have his uses, I must say. Ah, oh, that's correct. You know your stuff, don't you? He was supposed to be executed. In fact, according to the media and the law, he was executed. But as you can see, he lives on and works for me now. On one of his many vicious rampages, he somehow managed to get himself captured. Apparently, he had a choice between the law capturing him or all of his men. And even though he's a savage who pillages and robs small towns, his loyalty towards his men is unshakable. So, he sacrificed himself so his gang could leave free. 
<laughs> I like that story. I liked it so much that I decided someone like that, someone with that much resolve, could be useful in my service. So, I walked right into death row, approached his cell and offered him freedom. For service, of course. As you can imagine, he chose to become my servant, and soon I'll turn him loose with a completely free slate. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll use that second chance to become a better person. Or a better criminal. One that doesn't get caught so easily. Ah, oh, forgive me. <laughs> I've rambled on quite a bit, haven't I? I haven't even given you the chance to show me your gratitude for me doing virtually the same thing for you. Now... What do we say to nice people who help us? Ah, that's right. And so eloquently put. You have good manners, it seems. Now that is a trait I find most uncommon amongst my other servants. Sometimes they need to be taught manners. And more importantly... They need to be taught what happens when manners aren't given correctly. I see that won't be a problem for you. So now, come here, approach me. I would like to have a good look at you. Ah, you definitely are a demi-human, aren't you? Hmm. <laughs> I almost didn't believe it when my sources told me. I believe, judging by those ears, you're a descendant of a wolf clan. Am I correct? Now that is truly unique. I haven't had a demi-human in my service for a while. That would make you my only demi-human servant here. When you accept my offer, of course. You know, I've heard that your kind are immensely diligent towards handling your duties. The wolf demi-humans are also supposed to be unwavering in their loyalty towards their masters. I hope those rumours are proven true by you, servant. That's good to hear. I hope to see that. So, my sweet little puppy, what brings you to my service? I already know the answer to this, of course, but I'd like to hear it from your lips. People only ever end up where you are when they are either at a junction in life where <laughs> they quite literally don't have anywhere else to go, or they end up here for protection because working for me means no matter who's after you, you can't be touched while you're in my fortress. So, which is it from your point of view? Sounds like a little of both, to me. So, the Hunters decided you were their next target. Personally, I think those guys are just a bunch of fascists who kill your kind for nothing more than hatred and bloodlust. They've convinced themselves that their cause is noble. And when they rally together, they become very fierce indeed. I heard stories of uh, how they formed when your kind were freed. They despise your kind, don't they? Because they believe you shouldn't be allowed to live free. They believe you'll... What was it again? Overthrow us? 
What an old and pathetic sentiment. There's no difference between your kind and mine, except from genetic makeup. So, you won't find such idiotic prejudice here. I can assure you of that. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. I'm not a freedom fighter. Don't ever mistake me for a good person, hun. However, I am very rational. You'll be relieved to know the hunters don't like me very much, because obviously I look down on them for their archaic views. But they wouldn't dare cross me, because they know I'll wipe every trace of them from this land if they do. So, you're very, very safe here. While you're in my service, you can consider them non-existent. Because they wouldn't dare touch my property. <laughs> I guess I didn't need to tell you that story about my friend Cabal, did I? <laughs> if you've heard all those rumours regarding me. Listen, I'm not a kind man. And I'm not a charity case, but I am and I always will be fair. You are here because you heard the rumours of what I did for some of your predecessors, aren't you? For what I did for some of your kind. You know that you'd be the only demi-human working for me, not because I don't hire many, but because the last demi-humans who... worked for me... I turned loose... And now they live happy lives, safe and free somewhere. But remember, this is not a railroad. This is you giving me something and I giving you something in return. That's all. <laughs> you don't need to say that, of course you are. So, regarding my former servants, as I said, they all stood exactly where you stand now. They had nothing, or they had something very dangerous waiting for them behind my home's walls. They worked... They did everything I asked of them without protest, and they gave me everything they had to offer, heart and soul. You see, unlike Cabal, you can't offer me anything tangible like strength or your gang's might. You genuinely only have yourself to give. Just like the other demi-humans, so that's what I ask of you. When you've served me to an acceptable level and given me your absolute best, I'll turn you loose and I will make any of your problems just magically go away. <laughs> you ask that as if you don't know the kind of power I have at my disposal. I could slaughter every member of that little group chasing you, or I could even pay them off, and they wouldn't just stop hunting you, they may even start protecting you from other hunters. <laughs> You'd be surprised how quickly a man forgets his morals when money is concerned. I could make any of that happen, you know. Or more appropriately put, you could make any of that happen by going beyond what's expected of you and giving me your absolute best. Ah, uh -uh, I don't want to hear it. I want to see it, my dear. Words are so very futile in the grand scheme of things. 
I want proof. And you can only do that by giving me what I want, and that will take time. You see, I don't need to prove myself to you, because you already know what I've done in the past, and how I've helped people. But you need to prove yourself to me. Oh, and needless to say, come here. Come even closer to me. Yes. Needless to say, if you think for a second you could steal from me or betray me while you're in my service, I assure you... <laughs> whatever you're running from outside will be the very least of your fears. See, it's not just money that makes me powerful. I'm physically very dangerous. While you're in my court, I own you. That means you do what I say when I say regardless. And I expect only the purest of loyalty. Do I make myself clear? Good. I'll let you go now. Forgive me for pinning you against my desk like that. But I couldn't think of a better way to prove the severity of the way I felt about that matter. <laughs> so, I'd say you're pretty well briefed at this point. Even though I already know your answer, because you have no choice, but... Do you accept my terms and are you willing to temporarily become my property as you work yourself to freedom? Ah, splendid. Then allow our working relationship to finally commence. I'd like you to start off by familiarising yourself with my home. If you'd like to make your way down to my servants' quarters and approach the lady with the pretty blue eyes, she's my head maid. Her name is Gloxinia, and she's practically my right-hand woman at this point. I'd, uh, I'd be lost without her, but don't tell her I said that. She will serve as your boss, effectively. So listen and do what she tells you to do, okay? She can help you a lot. Oh, and don't let her beauty and gentle voice fool you. She has elf blood in her, so she's infinitely stronger and quicker than most creatures and people. In other words, uh, don't piss her off or mess her around, because you'll know about it. Anyway, go speak to her and tell her I've sent you for an orientation. She'll get you started right away. <laughs> you don't need to give me all that. You're welcome, alright? But always remember, this is a working relationship, okay? I'm no hero, and I'm not the hero of this story. Did you have any other questions before you leave? You seem to be staring at that painting over there a lot. <laughs> you think the woman on that painting is beautiful? Yeah, well, you wouldn't be the only one who thinks my sister's beautiful. You'll probably meet her somewhere down the line, I reckon. Her name? It's Pandora. And she's probably one of the most deadly assassins in all of these lands. She also has a hobby of irritating my employees. In fact, Gloxinia nearly killed her the last time I invited her around for tea. So, watch out for her when she comes around. That's uh, very poetically put. She'd probably like you, you know. She has quite the ego. 
She is as deadly as she is beautiful, my sister. That's right. But to me, she's just a massive pain in the ass. <laughs> so, any more questions? Preferably more relevant to your job. Brilliant. That's good to hear. Oh, and, uh... Before you leave to find Glux, there is one last thing. Remember to always address me as Master. Now, have a pleasant evening, my dear. I'll see you soon.